basically done. You know, you're, you're basically, once once uh, Clay Matthews does get healthy, you're, he's regulated to the outside because there's really nobody else. And I think that's maybe where it would have been beneficial, too, if this team was maybe a little bit healthier or, you know, less done, I guess, that you could maybe say, oh, well, we'll put, you know, Matthews kind of move him around a bit. Almost, almost like he did his rookie year, if I remember correctly, he would you'd have to find him on the field before every play because he'd be moving around to kind of keep people guessing from where he's coming from. And I guess we're, we are a long ways away from um, Clay Matthews' rookie year, that's for sure. But uh, Packers 4-5, and five, you know, there's still a game. You know, the, the, the bit of optimism, there's still one game out of the division lead. They're not out of it yet. They have two tough road games, though, coming up with the Eagles and the Redskins. The Redskins next week, Eagles uh, two weeks from now. That it could be a long, tough road if they don't find some way to to claw out of it. And you know, at at the absolute worst, I think you can you can say that this team can maybe still rebound as if they go one and one in these next next two games. But you basically these basically are two must win games for them. They got to, and the Eagles aren't going to be a tough beat. The Redskins, you know, they proved against a, a team in, in very similar shape in the Minnesota Vikings. They can handle them. It's going to be a tough, tough road. And you you got to hope maybe your team gets a little bit healthier. You maybe get Jared Cook back to help out on an offense, but you still need a lot of help on the defense. A lot of help. <laughs> oh, boy. And... I don't know. Well, we'll see what happens. It's getting it's getting almost frustration point, and um, it's almost to a point where you just gotta accept the Packers just aren't a good football team. Maybe they can salvage something and get in the playoffs. There's been bad football teams that that have made the playoffs before, so I guess I won't be surprised. But there need to be changes. Man, oh man. Other than that, you know, talking about the good things in Wisconsin here, we do have we did have Wisconsin basketball start up on Friday night. They beat uh, Central Arkansas, so that's good there. Um, trying to maintain that top ten run, you know, the, a lot of starters coming back from last year. Um, Greg Gard basically doing an awesome job recruiting, maybe one of the best jobs that that Wisconsin basketball, you know has ever seen the recruiting classes so we'll see that maybe up in the upcoming future so good things are probably coming for for uh the wisconsin badger basketball so it's gonna be fun following them and of course we have the wisconsin badgers football they move up to number six in the uh college playoff ranking so still you know basically winning out has a pretty good shot at least getting in the college football playoffs and that'll be fun to see you know they got purdue this week i believe minnesota um, basically rounds out their regular season schedule um, after they rolled over Jeff George Jr. and the Illinois Fighting Illini 48-3. to And you had some help with some of the upsets that happened. You had Iowa beat Michigan. You had uh, Washington losing to, uh, to USC. And then you also had um, Clemson losing to Pitt. And it was going to be hard to jump Michigan and Clemson with being one loss teams and, and some of the schedules that they have played up to this point. And especially Michigan, you know, winning that game in Ann Arbor a few weeks ago. So it, it would be hard, but again, still, um, you know, whoever they play, if it's going to be Penn or, uh, well, if it's, it could be Penn state, it could be Michigan. It could be Ohio state at this point. We don't know, but, uh, Whoever they play in the Big Ten Championship game, if they win out, there's a good shot. Preferably, you probably want them to play a team like the uh, um, Ohio State or Michigan. So actually, this really plays out in Wisconsin's favor, too, because uh, if you played Michigan and they were either undefeated or if they were, yeah, if they were undefeated because they were the only ones who really had a shot at going undefeated, they beat them in the the Badgers beat them in the Big Ten championship game, and then it came down to college football time where they'd go well, yeah you know you did, you did beat Michigan in the Big Ten championship game, you were rated fifth, they were rated third, however they did beat you in the season they only have one or they would have been second probably at that time, if they didn't lose this past week, 
And, and then, you know, obviously if they would have had one loss, you would have two. It might be hard to jump that team and put a two-loss team in the college football playoff. I mean, it, they probably would have, but it would have, it would have created some some heavy conversation at least and maybe lead to, to the expansion of eight teams, which probably is going to happen anyway too. So maybe not a big worry there either. But um, anyway, uh, I think the Badgers still control their destiny there. Um, quite a bit easier of a road now that they got over the humps in Northwestern. Um, maybe maybe can't relax too much with some of the upda- uh, upsets we've seen. Um, Purdue has um, been overall pretty bad, but have played some teams pretty competitively, so you can't rest on your laurels too much there. Minnesota, you know, the fight for the Paul Bunyan Axe. Basically, Wisconsin has dominated that, but you really can't can't rest on your laurels there either and just assume you get a win but seems like you know against the teams that they should they get they're getting their offense clicking unlike kind of what they did earlier in the year when they played the likes of uh, Georgia State and even uh what was it uh Tulsa or I can't remember can't remember their other non-conference game that basically didn't mean a whole lot but um you know I think they put up 40 points but their offense didn't look too sharp but um yeah, it should be exciting, and, and some of the crazy games. And, and just <laughs> this weekend, I think, proved why college football still the, the probably the best sport of all sports here. You know, the NFL is oversaturating themselves with bad football games on uh, on Thursday nights and Sunday nights and Monday nights. Although Sunday nights, some of these Sunday night games have been pretty good. But anyway, you get my idea. These London games early in the morning, you're, you're, you're spreading yourself pretty thin. College football, yeah, you know, you probably have games, you know, starting out. You do have games starting on Tuesday going all the way to, uh, um, you know, Saturday. And sometimes it wasn't like Monday. Sometimes they do them later in the year or beginning of the year. Can't remember how that works. You'll be going to Friday night games too. But a lot of your big ranked games are either going to be sometimes Friday night. Your majority of them are going to be on Saturday and, and just craziness to watch. Just some of those upsets, uh, you know. Looking at that game when I you know seeing the promos for Michigan and Iowa, and I'm like, just like maybe, just hopefully, they can pull off an upset. That'd be so awesome. And you're kind of, you're you're kind of just saying it like, yeah, uh, you know, it'd be nice. And it ends up happening because any it's almost like any given sun or any given Saturday nowadays more so than than uh, um, any given Sunday. You know, you look at at Pitt too in that game, and just being able to go punch for punch with Clemson was, uh, uh, you know, a pretty impressive feat in a team that really just five, five and four, just a, a mediocre football team, and that that they could come back and and uh, get that last second field goal to to take the victory just says a lot of how fun that sport is and and how great it is to to uh, watch. But we have our final four too for the. Uh, NASCAR Sprint Cup uh, Championship. We have Jimmy Johnson, Joey Logano, Carl Edwards, and Kyle Busch. They'll be fighting for the championship next Sunday night at Homestead. Should be a uh, interesting, interesting race too. As Jimmy Johnson's going for his seventh title. Um, you know, I've expressed my, I guess, total interest in in him getting seven championships. I don't think it really matters a whole lot, but. Um, Still should be quite interesting. Today's race, uh, you know, a heartbreaker, you know, especially for that 88 team. You know, you, you lost Dale Jr. about halfway through the year. You, you kind of had him for uh, about a month or a few weeks where he wasn't quite right. You know, had the concussion, you know, got out, had Jeff Gordon in there, had Alex Bauman in there. Never would have guessed Alex Bauman would have had the best chance all year long to win a race in that 88 car and, and had the fastest car all day long and, and proved he came back from, you know, I was, imp- I was the, the biggest thing that impressed me with Alex Bauman was not just the number of laps he led all day. Cause you know, basically any driver at that level besides probably Danica Patrick could take a, a, uh, a car that's the fastest car on the racetrack and, and just lead laps. But when he lost some track position on pit road, I think one of the last pit stops, he started back in six and this, this, you know, could have very well been a, a, a race-costing pit stop when 
when he fell back. Some people did stay out, but he did lose a, a couple spots there as well. Um, I think he fell back to like eighth or ninth or something like that, maybe tenth. And then he did work his way back up into second. The late caution may be proving to be a blessing that he would have another shot at at um, getting a uh, getting a victory. But then uh, Matt Kenseth's spotter kind of screwed up uh, a uh, Kenseth's chase opportunity to get a championship, and then B. Um, Alex Bauman's chances to get his first win. I think Bauman still ended up in the top five, so a, a good run for him. And I think um, races like that will boost confidence in you. You know, if you're taking a car that that on a team that can can basically f- finish pretty close to the top ten, and you're finishing around twentieth, you know, th- your your confidence isn't quite there. And 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 I'm sure he he had excuses too when he's in that number 23 Dr Pepper car of BK Racing that he was just in a in a lower funded team, but you know running running the uh, 88 car and not stringing up the finishes maybe you know some of the doubts that people had you know you know the old words that we like to use here on Sports Talk 920 that that maybe he's the squid uh, was was entering his head, but I think we proved that. You know he's still young. I think he's still around twenty five years old. That he he can prove that he's a, a pretty good race car driver. That maybe given the the opportunity to run in some competitive equipment, you know he might not be necessarily competing for championships, but maybe somebody that can contend for a win or two and, and get in, into the chase, and uh, you know be more worthy of a ride than, than some people out there that have some fairly competitive rides. It's going to be interesting to see. I, I know he has some future plans. I can't remember if they're with with um, uh, Junior Motorsports or not, but I think he is getting, uh, he is getting uh, uh, I believe, a full-time ride next year, which is good to see. I think hopefully it will revitalize his career and he'll be able to bounce back and do some good things. Do some really good things. Other than that, I think that's all I about have to rant about. Um, and the Dallas Cowboys now proving they have the best record in the NFL. Wouldn't have seen that coming. Still have played the probably the weakest schedule I think, but winning percentage in the NFL. So you can you can take that, or you can take the fact that they are um, now eight and one. They have won eight games in a row. Something I guess they haven't done, you know, in a long, long time. Maybe back in this. I think it was even back before their Super Bowl runs in the early '90s. So that's kind of crazy to see. But uh, we'll see how the, every week and week by week we'll see how the um, the season pans out. Um, but you can check us out all week on our blog at sportstalk920.blogspot.com. I will, before I go deer hunting this weekend, I'll be sure to put um, my midseason predictions. They'll probably change a ton from my uh, early season predictions of, as I swung on and missed badly on those. Um, so there's that, and uh, of course we'll put up the Sports Talk 920 NASCAR Pick'em standings too, how things shaked up after the race at Phoenix. One more race to go, who will win the championship, be sure to check out the blog for that. You can also follow us all week long on our Facebook page at facebook.com backslash ST920. And of course, probably the most updated thing of all is going to be our Twitter page, and that's at ST920 at twitter.com. Be sure to check us out there too. But until next time, for uh, myself, my Goodman, thank you all for listening to Sports Talk 920. Good night now.